For our environmental topic, we chose to discuss the environmental impacts of industrial meat production and GE agriculture. First off, genetic engineering is, a, is the displacement of DNA between animals or plants with other animals, plants, bacteria, or viruses. There are also GMOs, which are genetically modified organisms. This can happen naturally or through a controlled experiment of selective breeding, exposing different plants or animals to each other. These two are often combined into the term GMO, which is actually incorrect as the two differ substantially. With engineering technology today, we are able to target a single trait of an organism and alter the genetics of crops for many beneficial reasons. Through the engineering process, we are able to give crops the genetic ability to grow in conditions that they would not usually grow in. We can also increase crop density through the capability of fitting more crops into one area, as well as splicing their DNA with weather-resistant crops to make them more durable. Seed producing companies have modified different seeds to make them more resistant to herbicides and pesticides, their tolerance leading to greater yields in crops. <clears throat> there are many aspects to the modification of organisms, both good and bad. Our crops are now more resistant to disease and other threats which greatly increases the production of these crops. The increase in crop density has enabled us to produce enough food to feed our ever-expanding population. There are also nutritional benefits through the addition of vitamins and minerals to different organisms to boost nutritional value, which is a common practice in developing countries. Lastly, with the genetics of food at the hand of scientists, they can of course add genes to make food have better quality and taste. For example, peppers can be made spicier or sweeter, and difficult flavors can be made more palatable. <clears throat> the cons of genetically modified organisms also vary. Before getting to the environmental impacts, GMOs and GEs actually hold very little, if any, economic value as it takes the same amount of effort to grow and the same amount of time to mature. Studies have also shown that the consumption of GMO foods increases the risk of food-based allergies, so a person can develop a soy allergy from GMO efforts, then consume livestock that was fed GMO soy, and have a high probability of an allergic reaction. Envir environmental damage is inevitable when growing plants and raising livestock in environmental conditions that would not normally support them. Nutrition depletion occurs when soil is overused for a mass amounts of crops. There is also the chance that GE material could contaminate other plants. Due to the nature of crops having a tolerance to pesticides and herbicides, farmers tend to overuse them, which pollutes the environment and makes the crops toxic to non-target organisms such as bees and butterflies. GMO crops are very prominent in our world today. U.S. GM crops account for 93% of soy crops, 93% of cotton, 86% of corn, and 90% of canola. To put it in an even greater perspective, if you were looking at a grocery or clothing store, it is hard to find a product that does not consist of any of these crops. Although many countries require GMO and GE labeling, the U.S. and Canada are not part of that requirement. It is too soon to tell long-term consequences of these genetic modifications as we cannot adequately observe the effects on our health and the environment. There have been no short-term altercations from the consumption and use of GE and GMOs, but long-term safety is unknown. Can I have the mouse? Oh, yeah. <laughs> So on the other side of that coin, we have industrial meat production. And put simply, industrial meat production is the practice of producing meat in the most efficient way possible. In order to do this, most facilities employ CAFOs, or confined animal feeding operations. In a CAFO, animals such as beef cattle, pigs, or chickens are kept in extremely tight quarters. Everything from the breeding of the animals to waste disposal to slaughter is treated as a factory process here. This method of farming is often criticized because of its propensity to allow for certain types of diseases to spread easily. In order to combat this, CAFOs usually employ animal feed, which has been fortified with antibiotics, growth hormones, and vitamins. This cocktail of supplements allows for the animals to grow, even when they spend most of their time immobile. So why do we do it, if it takes all that extra effort? We use industrial meat production techniques today for a lot of the same reasons that we use genetically engineered crops. With industrial meat production, you can fit dozens more animals in a comparatively small space. 
Those animals can then be accessed at regular intervals without having to make time for all of that herding nonsense. Then you can harvest those animals at an increased pace with lower labor costs per animal. It follows to say that industrial meat production reduces the amount of land that we need to use to get the same amount of food. With the world's human population rising, land is becoming ever more valuable by the day. Industrial meat production helps to allow our burgeoning cities to exist without consuming all of the world's available land. In addition to the downsides previously mentioned, industrial meat production has some serious ethical and environmental concerns. The advent of industrial fertilizer is part of the situation which has allowed industrial meat production to proliferate. See, when industrial fertilizers were first introduced, it opened the door for farmers to specialize more thoroughly. Some of those farmers specialized in the industrial production of meat. The problem with that is that industrial fertilizers contain quite a bit more phosphorus than the animal manure that they replace. In the long term, things work out kind of like this. Uh, farmers use cheap industrial fertilizers. Excess phosphorus ends up in the soil and isn't consumed by plants. Rain falls and washes the phosphorus into rivers and oceans and the water. Algae, which feeds on the phosphorus, blooms in larger amounts than happens normally in nature, and it consumes all of the oxygen in the water. Then fish die of oxygen deprivation. Meanwhile, industrial meat production facilities are producing biologically disastrous amounts of animal waste in a space that in nature couldn't contain that many animals. Often, that waste also finds its way into the water supply. Together, these industries that used to be codependent on each other for disposing of their waste have managed to funnel their waste completely elsewhere. Now, combine that with the methane gas production of cows and the CO2 waste produced by slaughter and transport practices common in the industrial meat industry, you'll see that the combined environmental costs are quite large. Further, many critics claim that the conditions in which the animals are kept are inhumane. And despite these costs, many fast food joints still source their meat and eggs from industrial farming operations. And a fun fact about industrial meat production is that, for the sake of convenience, many facilities house their animals indoors. In the case of chickens, this was only recently made possible by the introduction of vitamin D fortified feed. This is because roof cover prevented the chickens from receiving sunlight and forming their own vitamin D. Vitamin D is necessary for the healthy growth of baby chicks as well as for correctly and completely forming eggshells. Um, so the, from the research um, performed in the project, we can conclude that though the genetic modification of crops and the industrialization of meat production has greatly increased food avail availability, it is also hurting our environment in multiple ways. Uh, we now have to worry about invasive species hurting others, toxic chemicals um, harming non-target organisms, as well as nutrient deficiency resulting from mass crops and the overuse of soil. We also must look at the fact that the majority of farmers no longer have a mixture of livestock in agriculture and are instead specializing in one or the other. Specialization imp impacts our environment negatively in two major ways. First is the overuse of um, industrialized fertilizer. To attain sufficient levels of nitrogen, farmers overwhelm the soil with a correlating level of phosphorus. Also, very uh, concentrated locations of livestock resulting from industrialized meat production lead to high phosphorus levels um, as well from all, all of the manure no longer used for crops. This imbalance leads to instability elsewhere. These high levels of phosphorus cause great damage to our water ecosystems and have the potential to create dead zones. Along with the uh, environmental impacts of these uh, processes, there is more controversy as well. Many people claim that playing with the genetics of organisms resembles closely the idea of playing God. There is also the more conflict of when it comes to industrialized meat production due to the inhumane uh, treatment of the animals. It is clear that these environmental impacts are not, are not to be taken lightly, but we're in an age of sustainable development, so there's hope for future improvements.